All right, let's stay with this issue now and speak to Mzwandi Lemasina, who is, of course, mentioned in Sam Gale's package as one of those who cracked the nod for the nominations of the ANC's Treasurer General. Mr. Masina, thank you so much for your time um, this evening. Let's start, you know, with, of course, the announcement today. You cracked the nod, uh, you know, for some of the branches. They want you to be their Treasurer General. And how confident are you that you will clinch this? And how are you feeling about this nod from the branches? Thank you very much uh, to you and the viewers at home. Uh, firstly, I, I am very uh, happy and I'm humbled by the branches of the African National Congress who have uh, given me an opportunity to stand as a Treasurer General of the ANC. I'm confident that uh, I should be able to assist the organization during this moment of renewal to ensure that we are able to rebuild and do things differently so that uh, we don't have some of the troubles that we've witnessed in the, in the recent past. And, you know, we'll talk about a little bit about the issues of renewal. Let's just stay with this position. I mean, the, the, the position of Treasurer General is one that has drawn much <coughs> criticism lately, especially when you look at how, you know, the workers would go without salaries. And it's really been quite a sore point for a lot of them. Let's say you are successful. What changes will you bring here? Well, uh, this was the, one of the ho hotly contested positions not less than 84 candidates were nominated in this uh, category. So I'm privileged to have been nominated as a third candidate. And I'm certain that as we consolidate, we should be able to do some work uh, around, around, around this area. Now, what are the changes that uh, I will be proposing um, when I become the Treasurer General of the NC? The first thing is to centralize the policy making uh, in South Africa, because what has happened in the, in the recent past is that the ANC has uh, sought to outsource the policy making into government. Um, uh, you know, we, we trailing behind as the movement. And secondly, as a result of that, we are unable to influence what goes on in different industries, you know, be it telecoms, pharmaceutical, uh, banking, uh, you know, insurance and so on. We, we, we only interact as government uh, once off in terms of uh, those people getting licenses from there, they disappear. There is no discourse that is consistent with the African National Congress. So I think that for me, it's one of the first big steps that we'll have to do. We'll have to consolidate the policy unit and give it to Treasury. Then secondly, create a Treasury function, not a bookkeeping function as it is now, uh, so that we are then able to draw experts who are going to help us to do certain things. One of the immediate tasks will obviously have to get the ANC because nothing stops us uh, to actually uh, um, get involved in some of the transactions in South Africa openly. So, so the ANC will need to move away from the welfare system where we wait for someone with a tender um, and then you give us an underhand as you've seen what happened in the Zondo Commission report. We'll have to move away from that so that we do proper transactions that you can declare and take the people of South Africa into confidence. Thirdly, um, we will then have to now hold our deployees accountable. You know, we will deploy uh, ministers, presidents, uh, premiers, MECs, mayors, councillors, but we don't hold them accountable in terms of responsibility. So we can't explain why the African National Congress has been unable to pay for staff. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, one critical example, uh, I was a mayor of the African National Congress for five years. Not even once my ANC called me to give me some form of instruction. I think that for me it's a missed opportunity because uh, we we contest the state power to influence society, but also to change the lives of our people. So it will be important for all the deployees to be held accountable at, at Lutuli House, so that it's not just uh, uh, free for all. You know, yeah. uh, I made a, a practical example. Like once I become a minister, I go on SABC or, or your competitors to look for a spokesperson. Whereas in the ANC, there are a lot of spokespersons that are there that can also contribute to the ANC. So we'll have to significantly deal with the reduce uh, the bill and ensure that all the financial obligations uh, of the organization are met by, by, by all of us. Very briefly then, do you think this is an ANC, though, that is able to renew itself post this particular conference? Because uh, some are doubting that. Looking at the outcome from branches, I, I really genuinely think that the branches of the ANC uh, are sending a very clear message that uh, this is a moment of renewal. Like all other times in South Africa, when the ANC was being renewed, it would have been a younger generation of leaders of the ANC who would have emerged. So I'm um, happy if you look at the deputy president, there's a young person there. If you look at the SG, uh, young people are battling it out uh, in, the, in the DSG, in the 
treasurer. So you can see that uh, there is a very strong sense from all of us that things can't remain the same because the ANC cannot die in our hands. So we have a responsibility as the membership to make sure that um, um, uh, we bring about the necessary change so that we can renew the organization. But also lastly, it mm -hmm. will be important for to understand and accept that for us to renew the ANC, we've got to change how we do things. We've got to change a lot of things that were, be were becoming like new subcultures in the organization, which are not sustainable, uh, including this new notion of uh, our leaders not finishing their terms, paging each other, gatekeeping, and so on. All those things will have to be things of the past in order for us to say fully we have renewed the African National Congress. But and lastly, mm. We need a single uniting vision as the African National Congress to deal decisively with issues that affect our people, which is poverty, unemployment, and inequality. So if we can speak in one voice on how the ANC is going to resolve those, including implementing some of the resolutions of the African National Congress as stated uh, in, in the 27 in Congress, because the ANC is not a new organization, we'll have to continue uh, to make sure that we note those resolutions and implement them. We cannot be good enough, the membership cannot be good enough to elect us, but very wrong to give us a mandate in the form of resolutions. We have to respect and yeah. implement the resolution organization as, as they are. And I'm certain, uh, I'm almost certain you've seen this one and I'm keen to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, EFF leader Julius Malema saying you are not ready um, to be at a national leadership level, saying that you are a regionalist. Uh, how do you respond to that? Look, I, I don't do public spec as a matter of my principle, but for your record, um, uh, I have served in the National Executive Committee of the ANC for three years, uh, in the Working Committee of the ANC, uh, I've served in the province, I've served in the region, I've been here for 34 years. I don't think that uh, I would entertain someone outside of our party to decide. We don't decide for any party who becomes their leader. So. Uh, my faith will only be decided by membership of the African National Congress, not people who contest our, our space. So I, I, I honestly, I don't think I will have to respond specifically to that uh, to that specific challenge. So yeah. I, I, where I'm sitting, um, I'm a, I've, I've been in the national space, uh, I've been a deputy minister uh, in, in the Republic, I've negotiated, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've negotiated uh, um, uh, for the country, some of the international engagement. So um, I, I don't think that uh, membership of the, as, as proven now, the membership of the ANC throughout the country have nominated me and that's my focus. And let's then talk about this issue. I'm sure you, you, you envisioned that it would come up. I mean, uh, they, there's reports and also even the ANC in Gauteng coming out to talk about this, that you may be facing a sanction uh, by the PEC. And they say that, uh, you know, as they deliberate your fate, they were talking about how they gave you certain instructions when it comes to the motion of confidence, but you decided to go against that. And we are expecting that announcement this week. What are you expecting? And have you been communicated to uh, in, maybe to say there's charges against you? Have you been formally informed as to what's, ha what's happening next? Well, in the ANC, a lot of things uh, happens and sometimes we understand and misunderstand each other. Uh, I would prefer to leave this specific question to the PEC, who will then have to deal with this issue specifically. Um, uh, I'm not authorized to speak on that. Um, what I can confirm is that um, there are no charges that have been leveled against me to date. Hence, I could accept the nomination without hesitation because I don't think that uh, there is anything at this point in time. If there is anything that changes, I will uh, convene a press conference and communicate uh, what is the way forward. And I hope when you convene the press conference, then you'll come onto the show and we have an update uh, for the viewers. But thank you so much for your time. Do appreciate it. That is Mzwandi Lamasina, ANC Treasurer General and nominee. And of course, uh, as we speak, waiting for the Gauteng PEC then to make its decision around his future as well. And of course, that could then, as he says, um, you know, become the moment when he gives us an update as to what happens next then with this particular nomination.